Good morning, this is Granny B coming to you from Fort Smith, Arkansas. And someone in my comments had asked if I would show them how to do a spaghetti squash. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to cut and prepare a spaghetti squash. And then once you get the puree or the, the strands of noodles out, then it's up to you to do whatever you want to with it. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with mine. It's just a suggestion, but uh, so here we go. This is a spaghetti squash, and uh, it's a nice one. I've got two of them. I've got a covered dish meal that I'm going to take a squash casserole uh, to tonight. So we're going to go ahead and get this ready. And, and then I'll show you our, our finished product later. So the first thing we're going to do is wash it completely because we're going to cut through it. And anytime you cut through anything like a watermelon or a cantaloupe or that you, your knife has to go through, if you will wash it first, then that protects you from taking uh, any kind of microorganisms through into the food with your knife. So we're going to wash it. They're tough, and but what you want to do is start, and that one's a little tough. I want to be extra safe, so I'm actually going to start with the pairing. To be extra safe, I'm also going to start with the dish cloth. This is a little tough, but you can work through it. I have also seen people cut it this away, and then you don't have to have you don't have to worry about this blossom end or the stem end. But I'm going to do it this way, just to show you that it can be done. <laughs> You're getting the full. Granny B effect here of grunting and everything. Okay, there's the first one. And you see it looks very much like a pumpkin on the inside. And, and it is a, a relative to a pumpkin. So we take a spoon and scoop all of this out. And those seeds are good. You can plant those seeds. In fact, I'm going to save them so I can share, share seeds with you. Okay, there's the first half clean. You want me to cut the other? Sure. Papa Bruce just asked if I wanted him to cut the other one, and I, I'm going to let him. <laughs> you be careful, honey. I like a, a ripe watermelon. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. You are. Okay. Well, so now you see that it does take a little bit of effort, but it's worth it because they're good and they are extremely uh, low fat. They're extremely low fat and high nutrition and uh, carb friendly okay some people this is just a tip now I don't like to do it like this but some people will take it and pierce holes all in it and cook it whole and then they don't have that struggle but I don't like the thought of cooking any of the squash with that those innards still in it. I want the I want all the innards out first. Just my own personal preference. And the 
seeds still be good if you cooked it? Oh, no, the seeds would not be plantable if you cooked it either, because the heat would destroy the, the vitality of the seed. Okay, four of them didn't quite fit into my baking pan, but that's close enough. My oven is at 400 degrees, and I'm just going to pop these into the oven for about 30 minutes. Oh, thank you, Papa Bruce. Nice to have an extra hand in the kitchen, isn't it? Okay. I will see you in about 30 minutes. Okay, there's our there's our innards and the pumpkin seeds. I mean the squash seeds. And I'm going to separate out all those squash seeds and save them. So if anybody wants spaghetti squash seeds, uh, leave me a comment and an address below. And, uh, and I'll send you a package of seeds out. You might even still have time to plant them because this is July 31st and uh, if you got them right away you might even be able to plant them and have a harvest before fall, before frost. Okay, we're back. It's been about 35 minutes. I've taken the squash out of the oven. You can test that it is done by poking a fork all the way through it. And you can see it's tender. So it's too hot to handle right now. But uh, I'm going to let it cool for about 10 minutes. And then I'll start making a, a squash casserole for you. In the meantime, I have cleaned the, cleaned the seeds. I've got uh, over a quarter of a cup, almost a third of a cup of seeds. So there's plenty of seeds, good ones. And then I pulled off all of the, the junk middle part. But we'll give, we'll give this to the ducks and the birds and they'll love it. If they don't, it'll just, we'll pick it up and put it in the compost pit. And then here's some nice, good, plump, you can tell those are going to be good seeds. So Let's we'll see. keep. So you can tell these are going to be good seeds. So we'll get the, those on a paper towel and let them dry. And once they're dry, then I'll put them in envelopes. And if anybody, again, I'm going to say if anybody wants a spaghetti squash seed, uh, leave me your name and address in the comments and or leave your name and address on my email address it's you can find it on the about page on the about column and I will be glad to send you some seeds cuz spaghetti squash just bears and bears and bears okay we'll come back in about 10 minutes okay it's been about 10 minutes I've started fluffing this squash um, when it's when it's tender, you take your fork and just pull it out into strands like this. Once it's to this point, you can do anything you want to with this. You could use this flesh in any kind of casserole. You could put it in soup. You can uh, use any pasta recipe you want with it. You could put marinara sauce on it, and it would kind of be like spaghetti, but nothing is, nothing's going to taste the, take the place of spaghetti. You could put Alfredo sauce on it, and again, it's going to give you the flavor of the Alfredo sauce, but everybody knows it's not going to be as good as Alfredo, <laughs> but it's, it's a good substitute. But anyway, you just take, oh, you could also just put butter, salt, and pepper on it like that and eat it like mashed potatoes. And uh, so there's lots of things that you can do with this. Uh, one of the things that's really good is to make, make sausage and peppers and tomatoes and uh, use it like that. I've scraped these shells here and I've got this much. 
product. Okay, here, here I have put a pat of butter on here and I've salted it and peppered it. We're just going to set it aside for a minute. In the meantime, I've got my casserole dish washed and I greased it with butter. And we're just going to put this in here. There's a country hash brown recipe that uses sour cream and frozen hash brown potatoes. You know, this would, that recipe would work with this too. Mm. I just took a bite of that with just salt and pepper and butter and it's so good. Take a skillet. And I'm just gonna make a cream sauce. That's garlic, an onion, about a fourth of an onion. Two tablespoons of butter. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sauteing some onions and garlic with this butter just to get the uh, just to get the onions a little translucent. And there were two tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of white flour. So what I'm doing here is just basically making a roux with gravy, with uh, garlic and onions. It's got two tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna use two tablespoons of flour. That's your, that's your roux uh, proportions. Equal amounts of flour and butter or oil. So we're, we're going to just stir this around until the flour gets cooked enough to where it starts giving you that nutty aroma. And it is. So now we had two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, so we need two cups of liquid. I'm going to use half and half today because that's what I have, but you could put milk or some kind of, uh, some kind of chicken stock. We're just going to make a, basically a gravy. But we need two cups, and that is just... <laughs> there we go. Cook it until it starts wanting to make bubbles, but not completely, because we're also going to put some cheese in. So this is one ball of mozzarella cheese and one chunk of Velveeta cheese. And we're gonna melt that in there and then we're gonna pour it over the noodles and it's gonna be like macaroni and cheese. Good, good substitute, but not quite macaroni and cheese. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, I'm a I'm a pasta girl. I love pasta, but uh, I have to limit it. And since we're making a cream sauce, one of the secret ingredients to cream sauces is nutmeg. So we're going to put just a little sprinkling of nutmeg. So we're going to put the the cheese in. And then my own home blend of salt and pepper. So be pretty, pretty generous with it. Taste for seasoning. Big spoon to dish, little spoon to taste. Oh, oh, that's good. Now, since I'm since I'm doing this to take as a covered dish uh, offering. 
tonight. I want to taste of it myself before we carry it, so I'm going to make me a little bitty dish right here that I can show you the finished product and let you let you watch me taste it and you can be jealous. <laughs> so There we go. So what I've done here is just made a a cheese sauce. I'm going to pour that over. Now everything is cooked here already, but we're going to put it in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes just to finish it off. There's my baby one. And into the oven it goes. There it is. We'll be back in about 20 minutes and, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, I've just taken the casserole out of the oven. It's still bubbling. It's got a little bit of a crust on it. You can see there's still plenty of moisture in there. Here's my little one. It looks like baked macaroni and cheese. Or almost potato casserole. <laughs> I, I, I laugh every time I say potatoes or pasta because that's, that's just one of my favorites. I am not trying to diminish from, from the, uh, the deliciousness of this spaghetti squash because it is very good. And uh, I hope if you've never tried it that you will. Just use it any way you want to. Uh, use any recipe you want to. But just replace the spaghetti squash with the potatoes or the noodles of pasta noodles. Uh, you can put it in soup. In fact, there is a vegetable soup that you put this, uh, the raw strands in. And it's very good, very tasty. And uh, I love soup too. In fact, soup, <laughs> I don't know, I tell Papa Bruce, my favorite food is bread. No, my favorite food is soup. <laughs> and uh, of course, pasta is right in there and it goes all together, so it's all good. I'm gonna take a bite of this now. Honey, you want a bite too? No, thank you. Still too hot to taste, I'm sure. I'm full from a while ago. Mmm. <laughs> that is good. The creaminess of the uh, cheese sauce just permeates this spaghetti squash the strands of spaghetti squash and then it has a kind of a crystal taste to it a crystal texture to it that uh, is hard to describe but it's good and uh, it's flavored just right I think our people are gonna like it tonight when I take it on the covered dish dish meal so I hope you try this this has been Granny B's recipe take it and make it your own bye bye